What's going on guys? So far, 2024 is the year of rain down here. We're getting a ton of it. And uh, not a bad thing though, except the mosquitoes that come along with it. Anyways, probably one of the most controversial topics that's ever struck the RV industry in the last year is related to a phenomenon called frame flex that everyone has been asking me about, they've been asking other YouTubers about, and I'm gonna give you my opinion on this, and it may, may or may not be the opinion you're looking for. Let's find out. Hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, so first and foremost, frame flex. What is frame flex? Well, frame flex obviously should be exactly what people are saying it is, where the frame of the RV is flexing whenever you're towing it down the road. I don't think people are specifically saying that their frame is flexing when it's parked, but maybe there's some of that going on too. So let's talk about this. So a lot of folks, specifically with one brand, are claiming that they're getting what's called frame flex. Now, before we dive too far into this, all the engineers who watch this, anybody who's an architect, anybody who's dealt with a superstructure and putting something like this together is obviously going to know that there is going to be some flex that takes place that's inherent to something like this, anything that has this type of a frame structure. This is not what I would consider to be an incredibly rigid frame, even though once you put the whole thing together, you build the box, the sidewalls, the roof, the flooring, and you put all the different cross members, all the different bracing, the furniture, everything inside of it, there is going to be some structural rigidity built into that. That said though, flex occurs in almost anything that is built, whether it's a pickup truck, whether it's a car, whether it's an RV, whether it's a home, everything has flex and it's gonna flex and it's gonna deform slightly if there's a lot of wind, if you're pulling it over uneven terrain, if the suspension is working, when you have it hitched up to your vehicle, everything's gonna flex, that's gonna happen. So to call this frame flex, or specifically what people are dealing with, calling that frame flex, I don't necessarily think is the right terminology for it. If you have a failure in your frame because it's deforming and not returning back to its original position, and that deformation causes it to fail, then you technically have frame failure, not frame flex. So typically on a fifth wheel, the vast majority of your stress on the fifth wheel are gonna be in a few areas. One of them, and this is probably gonna be the least amount of structural stress, is gonna be along your sidewalls. Basically, you have this long I-beam. In the case of this one, we have a drop frame, so you have a drop frame below it right here. You have energy that's moving all over the place when you're pulling one of these down the road. But if you're going down a perfectly smooth road, the RV is going to want to do this number. It's going to want to want to bounce over a pivot point. And that pivot point is going to be your center axles. Basically, I say center axles because they're positioned towards the center of the RV. So you have all this weight overhanging the back. You have this weight up front. And when you hit a bump, the frame's going to want to do this number. So there is absolutely going to be movement. There's going to be deformation and there's going to be flex that takes place along the superstructure, along the sidewalls and the main frame rails of your RV. Again, we want that to return to where it normally would be. We don't want it to stay in a flexed or a bent position. Otherwise, you have bent steel. You have a deformation that is a failure in essence, right? That, that means something wasn't designed properly. Now, that stress, that flexing, is going to be inherent across the entire RV. How much so really depends on the structure of the RV. Was it designed to flex? And all of them are slightly. If you tow these down the road, you put a camera inside, and you actually look at the sidewalls, you'll see light appear and go away. Light appear, go away in different areas if it's perfectly dark inside and it's really sunny outside. And that is flex taking place. That's deformation taking place. But again, we want it to return back to where it begins. We don't want it to stay in a flexed or deformed point. Now, when we look at the front of the RV, that's arguably where most of your flex or deformation is going to be because you have this upper deck area right here. You essentially have an area that rises up and expands out over the front, creating a lever arm up front. And whenever you're pulling on that, whenever you're tugging on that, whenever you stop and the RV's momentum is pushing forward on it, this area is going to flex. It's just going to happen. To what degree is what we're concerned about, right? If it's flexing several inches, well, you have a problem. That's where something has obviously failed. A structural cross member, a structural support, some type of structural element of the front upper deck overhang area obviously is not working. 
and it's being worsened every time you tow the RV or you go over unlevel ground, essentially where some of the tires have to raise up, some of the tires remain on the ground, and you have the RV's body kind of pivoting and moving slightly. Those are all things that can make it worse if you have some type of structural element that wasn't designed properly or is being overly stressed out from being towed. Now the question people ask is, is this something that's detrimental to the structure of your RV? It absolutely can be. If you have metal deformation that is flexing so much that it's actually starting to cause fatigue with the welds or the frame or the structure itself, those components could absolutely fail eventually. And if they do, well, that could be catastrophic. And a lot of people with fifth wheels have actually experienced this. A lot of people with fifth wheels from all sorts of different brands, from incredibly reputable, super, super strong frame brands to your lower cost brands. I've gotten videos and images of so many people who have had some type of problem over the past six or seven years saying, what do I do about this? How is this caused? Some people take responsibility for it and they'll say, you know what? I pulled it over this off-road scenario. I did not realize how bad it was gonna be. I ran it slightly into a ditch. I did these different things, what do I do? Some people don't know how it occurred. Some people, you know, they'll tow their RV from here to Alaska and back three times, and then they have some major issue, and they feel like it could have been because of this one scenario that happened, but they're just not 100% sure. And then some people believe that it absolutely had nothing to do with how they were towing it. It was just something that occurred randomly, and it was obviously a defect in workmanship or material on the RV, which could very much be the case. There's a lot of frames that roll off of assembly lines, and those frames, you know, can't always be perfect. There can't always be full understanding in terms of how they're going to perform whenever they're towed down the road long term, especially if they're loaded up with stuff, right? If you have tons and tons and tons of weight inside of it, especially up front in an area that's just gonna emphasize the amount of leverage that's being applied to the front section, especially with a big lever arm coming off of it. So again, whenever you think of frame flex, you can't really call it frame flex. Even though frame flex occurs, it occurs in every RV. It occurs in every pickup truck, in every car, in every structure to some degree. What I would consider this is more of a defect in how the frame was designed if it's related to a manufacturing issue. If it's related to how you tow the RV, if it's related to where you tow the RV, or what conditions you're willing to tow the RV through, well, then that's probably just excessive use. That's probably just excessive, even abuse of how the frame was designed or how the RV was designed in general. So there's gonna be a lot of back and forth here. And I fully believe that there are absolutely real cases of manufactured defects, just a frame not being designed properly, maybe the welds not being done properly, maybe the structural form of the frame not being built or designed properly for how the manufacturer of the RV is gonna put all their stuff inside of it. I do absolutely believe that is occurring. Now, on the other hand, I also believe that there's going to be a percentage and probably a relatively high percentage of units that have had some type of deformation, some type of frame failure that occurred because the owner of the RV took it somewhere and through conditions that they were like, you know what, we can make it. Let's just pull it through there, give it some more gas. Let's get it to where we want it to be because we love the view and we really want to take it there. I believe there is probably a relatively high number of people who have experienced that as well. I know Know just from doing this as long as I've been doing it there are so many people who are absolutely willing to say I know exactly how that occurred it was when I did this but then there are a lot of people who buy a brand new RV they don't tow it very far or they tow it very far over normal highways that aren't super crazy rough and super unmaintained that are gonna have this problem simply because the RV itself has this problem so again we can't really call this frame flex as many people out there want to say, hey, this is frame flex, the RV frame is flexing, that's going to happen anyways. Again, to what degree is going to vary, and a lot of it depends on how the superstructure of the RV was built after the manufacturer of the RV got the frame itself and decided to start building on top of it. But we really have to start calling this by what it really is, and that's going to be frame failure. We have to determine where we have to determine what is failing on the frame, what is causing that failure to occur, and why out of the millions and millions of fifth wheels that are on the road and sold, is it affecting a relatively small number of them? If you have a million RVs on the road and there's 500 of them that are going through this issue, yes, that's a big number. That's enough to probably get a recall going, but why is the issue occurring? And can the manufacturer of the RV, can the frame manufacturer, can they claim that it's abuse and neglect versus normal normal wear and tear versus a manufacturer's defect. That's what the clarification here needs to be. 
And I can almost guarantee you it's going to be a percentage of both. It's just going to happen. There's going to be manufacturer's defects where they're like, yeah, that was absolutely us. Look at where this weld broke. This was not done properly, something like that. And there's going to be cases where after investigating, it's like uh, we can tell that something, something violent occurred to this RV that caused this problem. Anyways, guys, I would love your feedback. Leave a comment below. What do you guys think, especially those of you who deal with structures, especially rolling structures, whether you're an engineer, whether you're a mechanic, whether you work in a assembly line. I would love to know what your feedback is on this and give me your thoughts because it's important to get perspective from all sorts of different people who potentially could be going through this or potentially have knowledge of how something like this could occur. Anyways, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.